The 10.9 update, aka the Fall Forever update, looks incredible. But there are some things that have me a bit worried. The update will be released on May 7th, and in this video, we'll be doing a deep dive on what to expect, and I'll share my thoughts and concerns along the way. Let's first talk about the new stuff that will be in creative mode. We'll be receiving a new skybox that will be in jungle, which comes from Legacy Season 5. We'll also be getting some new stickers or decals, and at the moment, we have 13 stickers in Fall Guys Creative. Unfortunately, the blog post nor the trailer specified how many stickers are going to be added in the 10.9 update. The timer will be increased to 30 minutes. 30 minutes will definitely help out the casual players. However, that doesn't mean we'll have to wait 30 minutes if we already qualified. I'll talk about why later in the video. Invisible checkpoints will now be a thing. I'm guessing that you will turn the visibility of the checkpoints on or off rather than it being a new object entirely. However, I would love to see checkpoints that don't have the yellow fence on the side, so like a flat checkpoint. This doesn't even need to be a separate object, just make it a setting in the checkpoints parameters. I played a level in Solar Shuffle and it looks wonderful very well made. However, the yellow fence from the checkpoints just stick out like a sore thumb. With invisible checkpoints, they could hide the checkpoint itself if they want to, and the level could look so much cleaner. Maximum object values for some objects have increased, such as slime floors, spinning plates, fans, pendulums, and much more. Not sure what this means exactly, I assume it's the amount of something that you can put in your map. Potentially, the biggest thing they've added in creative mode in this update is the addition of rotation controllers. In the trailer, we can see that it looks like a gear, and its description reads, quote, this controller is the axis of rotation for all other objects connected to it, end quote. And the budget is 180 memory units as seen in the trailer. I cannot wait to see what people do with this rotation controller. I could just see so many mind-bending levels made with this. We currently don't know what it can and can't move, but from the looks of the trailer, it can move objects like padded blocks, shapes, half pipes, speed bumps, padded beams, clouds, pillars, and even the boom blaster. And this is just my theory and speculation, but I probably won't be able to rotate moving objects like rotating floors, seesaws, plates, and etc. And with the jungle skybox being added, Legacy Season 6 is the last classic season to not have a skybox in creative mode. Along with that, SS1 and SS3 don't have a skybox either. The invisible checkpoints are one of those things that most won't care about, especially people who only play levels, where creators can finally make themed levels without having to worry about the checkpoints sticking out and just ruining the entire immersion. Not a lot of major updates to creative mode itself this time around, but we already had survival come out last update, so I'm not too sad about it. Not every update needs to add a hundred different things to creative. In the blog post Minotaurus made about the 10.9 update, they mentioned a few things regarding existing creator rounds. If you happen to have creator made rounds, make sure to check on them once the update rolls out on the 7th, especially if you have large gaps that need the flipper or yeetus to clear them, and the changes to jumps can affect the way people play your level. In general, it's good practice to check on your levels every update because we've had some updates that have broken the clouds, updates has broken the blizzard fans, heck the last update actually broke blizzard fans to where if you set your fan to strong it'll actually be weak, and if you set your fan to weak it'll be strong. In the power party update aka the 10.6 update, clouds that were set to large were actually got scaled up to the max, breaking a ton of levels. I believe this is the first time Miltonic got actually upfront about changes that could happen as a result of an update. The most talked about thing in the trailer was a new explore mode, which is basically an endless mode in where you can keep on playing creator made rounds for hours on end if you want to. Previously, if you played a level you didn't like, you were either forced to leave and as a result not get any rewards or just stomach through it and try to qualify. However, with the Fall Forever update, you now have the ability to skip a level and move to a different one, and you don't have to wait a certain amount of time to use it. You can use it whenever you want, which isn't something most people are going to appreciate, but being able to skip a level the second you load into it is nice, especially for the level you already played or a level you know is going to be a pain to go through. Once you've played enough creative levels, you have a sixth sense for this kind of stuff. What's interesting is that in the trailer it shows someone skipping a level and they got some fame, as seen by the label on the left side of the screen. I don't know if this is how it'll work when it actually releases, as you could just keep skipping levels and getting fame. Also, when you skip a level, the banner shows skipped, which is neat. It is a very obvious thing. Obviously, when you skip, you should have some indicator, but I found it pretty cool. However, being able to skip levels isn't even the best part. Once you qualified, you can immediately go into the next level. The banner at the end shows completed, and even the label shows completed rather than qualified. You have no idea idea how happy I was when I learned that we no longer have to watch newbie players struggle to qualify for 5 minutes and we can just move on to the next level. However, if you're that newbie player, you no longer have to feel bad about holding the game up. And most importantly, no longer do we have to watch a cave dwelling, slime eating, 11 IQ loser who runs down the clock by not qualifying. Susie, I just had a game in where this fatherless moron wasted 5 minutes of everyone's time. So believe me, when people will look back at this update, this feature 
to will be something they praise and wonder how he lived without this for so long. May 10th will make it one year since Creator Mode released, and 362 days later we got this feature. As previously mentioned, they increased the timer from 10 minutes to 30 minutes, which is great for the casual player as they have more time to qualify, and those who already qualified can just move on to the next level. I'm curious, can we choose to stay and spectate others or do we have to move on? If you play this mode with a party and one member qualifies, will they move on without you and just the rest of you guys will have to stay until you qualify? I assume once everyone in your party has qualified, you'll move on to the next level as a group. Miyotaring did mention being able to play this mode with a party. They did mention that races will be called courses. I think it'll just be rounds in this mode that gets that change or race maps made in creative will be called courses. Will the race game mode in the creative menu get a name change? I guess that's something we'll have to find out when the update finally releases. Something I found interesting, in the blog post, they mentioned that the explore mode will feature rounds that are the most liked and that are new. And it seems like this will be automated by an algorithm and not manually added by a person, which does make sense since it will basically be a never ending mode. The thing that could throw a wrench in this mode is the fail to download bug. They didn't mention fixing it in the bug fixes. Like what happens if you're two hours deep into the explore session and you get the error? All the famous shards you earned won't get tracked as you didn't technically leave, you got kicked out. The fail to download bug has been a thing since the 10.5 update and is the main reason why Mutana got rid of their SS4 levels from solos in the first place. Let's hope this bug doesn't appear in explore, otherwise it'll be the death of that mode, especially if it appears often. A small line that most will gloss over is that levels will automatically be updated if any changes are detected, meaning if a section of your level is broken or people fall into a gap and they can't get up, when you go and update the level, it'll automatically be updated in the explore mode, so you wouldn't need to tag Fogger's Owl on Twitter and ask him to publish the latest version of your level. While most will use this for good things, I could see creators adding impossible to beat sections or deleting most of the map in general, taking advantage of the new system to troll people. However, with the skip level option, that doesn't matter. I just report the level, then skip to the next one. The mode will be able to hold 10 players, so it's not something you play by yourself. But again, it doesn't matter as you can move on to the next level as soon as you qualify. Once you leave, you'll gain rewards based on how many levels you completed. The trailer shows a player earning crowns, 11 crowns to be exact, and then got gold on 27 rounds. I assume it'll give us shards. How much isn't something that we know quite yet. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a low amount like 5. What makes me happy is that we'll earn progress through the challenges and the fame pass when we play the explore mode, meaning you can use explore to finish your daily and weekly challenges, which is great. This is notable because in version 10.8.1, Mutonic made it to where if you play rounds found in the discovery beta tab, you will no longer be able to earn fame found in the challenge board. You used to be able to complete your dailies and weeklies by playing maps found in the discovery tab, but not anymore. Genuinely one of the stupidest things that Mutonic have done in recent memory. Apologies for the side tangent, I can see a lot of content creators doing marathon challenges when Explore comes out. While I'm hyped for this mode, I can see a ton of maps featured being low quality sprinkled in with some okay to mediocre maps, especially since the algorithm will actually add maps that are new. And if you've seen the maps in the newer rounds tab in the discovery beta tab, you know there aren't anything to write home about. And this is something that I could definitely see people complain about. But I'm hoping for the best and that as the algorithm gets better, we'll see high quality levels on a consistent basis. But I wouldn't be surprised if we see a lot of low quality slop, especially when the explorer mode is young. Some new social features have been added. The aptly named social wheel can be pulled out and you can choose from 8 different quick phrases that will appear on the top of your head. Along with that, it shows cute emoticons as well. This reminds me heavily of Rocket League's quick chat. I cannot wait to say great job when someone falls off the map. Tons of people are going to be using this very sarcastically and I will be one of them. And the social wheel can actually be used in all kinds of maps, including unity made rounds. So this will be super useful in pixel painters to where if you're playing on the random and they're running on the tiles, you just say no and hopefully they'll stop running or you know you can use a social wheel to help guide them what to do. Obviously the phrases are very basic, they could definitely add a lot of new phrases. Hopefully they'll add some phrases that are specific for certain maps like pixel painters for example, that would be really cool. But of course you could use it to help others in a more general sense. Standing at the end of the finish line with a bunch of players, emoting and being silly is a part of Fogger's culture and has gone as far as back as the game's inception back in 2020. So this feature is a great addition and it can be used to provide further assistance to others as previously mentioned, although it'll probably be used to have some fun. And speaking of providing assistance, the piggyback feature allows players to request for help. You can accept or decline, but if you do accept, there'll be a person on your back. You can do most of the Fall Guy things like jump and dive while having someone on your back, and you will not be slowed down at all. And I'll be honest, I just freaking love it, man. It, it, it just looks so goofy. It's awesome. I could literally see people make YouTube videos called carrying my fan to their first win on Fall Guys, or challenge videos of people racing each other while piggybacking other people, or how many levels can I complete while piggybacking other people. To all the content creators, big or small, you can use any of the ideas I listed in this video, no problem at all. In the blog post, they 
mention changes that will be made to the Fall Guy character itself, such as ragdolling less often than you should. I hope this change applies to when you try and slide dive while having speed and you just ragdoll out of nowhere. I hate when this happens, especially in track attack. They also mentioned being able to get up faster after you've been knocked down, which is cool. Mid air control is interesting. We'll have to see how much control we have when the update comes out. It could come in clutch in certain situations. Landing target is a feature in where it projects a circle below you while you're in the air, so you can use it to see where you'll land. Think the circle in volleyball that lets you know where the ball is going to land. Thankfully, it's a feature you can turn off. It reminds me of the crown grab text you can turn on in the settings. Do correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe if you install the game for the first time, this actually is on automatically, and that only appears on Fall Mountain and Lost Temple, which are crown grab maps. It just basically says grab the crown. This part of the update has me a little freaked out, not gonna lie, because I have this muscle memory developed over 2.7 thousand hours of Fall Guys, although I love the change to ragdolling and hope it works as intended. This is potentially the biggest part of the update and the part that has been the most worried. Solos will now be called Knockout and hold 32 players, be 3 rounds long and have 40 maps in total. Some of them will be maps made in Fall Guys Creative, some by Minutonic and some by the community. Though we aren't sure how many creative maps will be added, squads and duos will also share the same round pool as Knockout Solos. The big thing is, is that they'll refresh the rounds on a quote regular basis, but that's vague. Is it once a week, twice a week or monthly? We don't know. The thing that has me worried is that the round pool is 40. We currently have 57 maps and solos, 5 of them being creator made rounds. And with this change, they'll be removing 17 maps from solos, 22 maps from squads, and 15 from duos. Back when SS4 came out on May 10th, 2023, they changed the player count from 60 to 40. And people were saying how hard it became to qualify because if you messed up even once in some rounds, you're not qualifying. Leading and light and airtime are great examples of this. With 32 players, qualifying could be a lot more difficult. I personally didn't mind the shift to 40 players and grew to like it over time, but I can see why some won't like it as it could make higher SBM lobbies a sweat fest with no room for error. In a community post I made, some commenters were saying how 3 rounds is too short and I'm not gonna lie, I love the idea of a 3 round show, in paper anyways. We'll have to see how it works out when it releases. I immediately got reminded of Stumble Guys and how it also has a 3 round limit. I loved when Mutonic released a quick version of Solos and it had a 4 round limit. With Mutonic allowing more round types to appear in round 1 and 2, will they increase the frequency of other round types? And will finales be included? Also, don't forget this applies to squads and duos as well. Are we gonna get team games with squads at all? I'm not someone who plays squads and duos all that much, so I'm not sure how common or uncommon team games are, but with this change, it could make team games non existent. The last time the game had 40 maps in the core modes was back in Season 3 Second Secrets, aka SS3. And saying I'm not a fan of SS3 is putting it lightly. How frequently they refresh rounds will make or break this change. Joe Mama Walsh, the creative director of Fall Guys, mentioned how creative maps made by Minotonic will be added, but not the ones they made at the start of SS4 thankfully, and that rounds made by the community will be added, and also the unity rounds will be added as well. The quality of the creator made rounds will also play a role how well liked the knockout mode will be. To me, 40 is a low amount of maps, however if they play the cards right, this could be a great change. I'd love it if they refreshed it every 2 weeks as that will give us enough time to play the maps, but not long enough to where they'll be boring. Though every week would be great, I just don't see it happening. And even if they do refresh it once a week, I just don't see them maintaining that pace constantly. Although once a month would be realistic. Also another factor is how many maps are they going to remove, replace or refresh? And if they refresh two little maps, then people aren't really going to notice the refresh and complain that the round pool is still stale and that refresh isn't really doing anything. Or you could swing the pendulum the other way and you can refresh or remove a ton of maps that people like and replace them with maps that people don't like. So really it's going to be a balancing act between how many maps they're going to refresh and how often they're going to refresh. And Mutonic are probably going to keep their ears close to the ground and listen to their community and get their feedback based on the refreshes and hopefully if they do take this serious and actually decide to commit to you know refreshing maps on a consistent basis and make sure the quality is high, then the 40 round pool really won't matter all that much. There's a section dedicated to vaulting and how refreshing isn't like vaulting. Let me read it to you directly from the post. Quote, knockout refreshes are not going to be a repeat of vaulting. Our aim of knockout is that each refresh brings back old classics that we know our players love alongside a suite of awesome new creative levels to keep you on your toes. End quote. The word old classics is interesting. Does that mean we'll be getting maps unvaulted? Though it doesn't explicitly say that, it could be interpreted as such. People have been saying this could be the end of vaulting as with refreshes, we could see vaulted maps back with every refresh. Personally, I'll believe it when I see it. Most maps get vaulted due to be broken and usually Mutonic puts these maps in the back burner to focus on other things like creative. I'm not counting on every vaulted map coming back. Even if you get 5 to 10 rounds back, I'll be happy. The last time the unvaulted rounds was on November 7th, 2023. And that's when the Tulip update, aka the 10.5 update released. And what's funny is that the update is coming out on May 
7th, so it'll be exactly 5 months since the unvaulted rounds. It could be a coincidence, but it's something to think about. The show selector will be renamed to Game Selector and will consist of two game modes, Knockout and Explore. And Mutonic will quote, occasionally bring back classic LTMs people love. Futures year and in the blog post there's actually one small line that I just skimmed over and didn't even think about. It's a line where it says, quote, duels and squads will still be available and will have the same round pool as Knockout. This could possibly mean that team games are going to be coming back to solos or knockout solos because they said that squads and duels are still going to exist. So are those going to get the monogram of knockout as well? So like knockout solos, knockout squads, knockout duos. And I'll be blunt, I'm not a fan of the idea of team games coming back to knockout solos. Like I loved it when at the end of Legacy Season 6, they actually got rid of team games for a main show. And a small history lesson for our friends who joined when the game went free to play. Solos used to be called main show and basically from Legacy Season 1 all the way to Legacy Season 6, main show used to contain all the possible maps you could get at the time and even team games. Well, Egg Siege and Hoarders did eventually get removed from main show because they weren't popular and frankly, people didn't like them. Although when squads did come out, you could still play those maps there. Flash forward to the end of Legacy Season 6 and they actually removed team games from main show. Then at the start of Season 1 Free For All or SS1, they actually renamed main show to solos. And the only way to play team games was to play squads and duos. Although they removed team games from duos entirely, but they re-added Penguin Pursuit only only Penguin Pursuit to duos, but it's like stupidly rare to get. I swear I had a chance of finding two golden llamas at the bottom of the Mariana Trench that I had freaking getting Penguin Pursuit in duos. Although if all the team games are going to be coming back to knockout solos, will Pixel Painters be added to solos then? I doubt it just because I believe they made that map with the squad and duos feature in mind. Although there are some solo exclusive rounds that they can port over to knockout duos and knockout squads such as Short Circuit, Leading the Light, Tail Tag and others. I don't know, I just don't like the idea of just not being able to escape teen games because with teen games you're going to be paired up with randoms and that was probably the whole reason they got rid of teen games in solos anyways because people just flat out didn't like the idea of just playing solos playing a literally a solitary mode and just getting paired up randomly with some idiots and just losing possibly like in squads or duels you have the expectation that okay you're playing a squad in duo mode obviously you're going to be paired up with somebody you, you're going to go and you're going to advance through as a team but in solos you join with the tension of just you know by yourself you don't want to get paired up with anybody. But again, we don't exactly know if they're going to add team games solos and there are some people who actually want team games and solos and I'm just, I'm just genuinely flabbergasted. I just don't know why like squads and duels are literally right there. But it is pretty rare to get team games and squads and duels itself so I assume it will be pretty rare to get in knockout solos as well. But just the idea of just getting it when I just don't want it really, just, really just irks me to be honest with you. But I could be in the minority here but I don't know. Apologies for the incoherent rant. It was basically my unscripted thoughts on team games possibly coming back to knockout solos. I'll be honest, with Pixel Painters, I don't think the round pool between all three modes can possibly be the exact same. Unless Minutonic makes a tweet on their social medias or on their discord, the only way we're going to find out is on update day. I wonder if they'll change how often LTMs appear. It usually appears every Thursday and I personally hope they don't change that at all. Minutonic has also increased the amount of fame we can earn in knockout rounds and in the challenge board, which sounds nice, but how much is yet to be seen? I found the response to the statement of why not just keep adding levels quite funny because it's that it's harder to keep fresh when adding new levels is literally what keeps things fresh and exciting. Although I do agree with them saying that it's harder to master levels if the round pool keeps growing because chances of you getting that level decreases. Ironically, the statement is said when releasing a mode that has seemingly an unlimited supply of levels. But again, this hinges on how often they refresh and change the round pool. They revealed Fame Pass 10 and that it'll release on May 7th alongside the 10.9 update. This being the second update in which the Fame Pass and update released at the same time. The first one being the Fabulous Feast Pass and the Tulip update. Also, Fame Pass 10 will end on June 4th. They also adjusted the tiers from 300 to 70, and if this means that the pass will only have 70 tiers max, I'm all for it. I'll be making a video about Fame Pass 9 and my thoughts on it, but let's just say I'm so glad they're not doing the 300 tiers again. Joe Mama Walsh, who's the Fall Guys creative director, recently went on the Fall Guys Discord server and answered some questions people asked. Here's a summary done by the Fall Guys Wiki, however, I'll go over some of them one by one. Someone asked if the ragdolling issues on slam sites has been fixed, since this wasn't mentioned in the blog post, and Joe has confirmed that this indeed has been fixed. I wasn't sure either at first, but I'm so glad to hear it. Another user was talking about the piggyback feature and how it could be abused, and Joe chimed in and said that both players need to agree to a piggyback for it to happen, and that you just can't jump into someone's back whenever you want. And Joe also said that Bean Fort, one of the levels that was featured in the Survival Shorter LTM, would be added to Knockout because, quote, we all love that round, end quote. I'm not gonna lie, it's one of the better designed Mutonic creative rounds, so I'm glad it's getting added. The social wheel, aka the emo chat wheel, will be in every show. In the trailer, the only show the creator may around 
rounds, so some might have wondered if the social wheel will be in the regular modes, but thankfully it's in every show. And a feature I thought for sure would be a creative exclusive, that being piggyback, is in fact going to work in all shows. This is the second feature they've added that will be available in all shows and rounds. The first one being dive sliding, and for reference, that got added in Season 3 Psycho Secrets aka SS3, and that released on November 22nd, 2022, so a year and 5 months ago by the way. Power ups are a thing and they're technically a gimmick or a feature I suppose, but they're exclusive to rounds made in Fall Guys Creative and cannot be found in Unity rounds, but that could change one day, but I doubt it. Also, power ups were introduced with the 10.6 update for those curious. Joe explained how Knockout aka Solos will be a combination of original empty levels aka Unity rounds, MT creative levels, and community levels, so this confirms that creative levels made by Biotonic will be added to Knockout. However, he also said that SS4 launch levels will not be added. I find it hilarious how he replied to that, but I'm glad he did. And someone asked how much does piggybacking slow it down and Joe said none, which means it doesn't slow it down at all, which is great. Someone in chat said that Explore will be the new Solo's Chill and Joe pretty much confirmed it, stating that they learned a lot from the Chill and Shuffle modes and they put their findings into Explore. Fan favorite levels in Knockout and Explore will stay longer in between refreshes. And speaking of fan favorites, I hope that LTM returns. The last time it appeared was in Season 1 Free Fall aka SS1. Since Explore can hold 10 players, survival rounds can appear in the Explore mode, but the time will be much shorter. You're able to carry a beanball power up while someone is on your back. However, this makes you wonder, are you actually able to hold a sneaky bean power up or party crasher while someone is on your back? However, the beanball is a little special because if you use it, the person on your back will be popped off since you're obviously in a ball form. Not gonna lie, it would be pretty funny to see you actually try to hold on to a person's back while they're in a beanball form. Mutronic also posted some bug fixes. I won't be talking about most of them as sometimes the bugs they say they fixed doesn't actually end up being fixed. The explore mode is the next step in playing Fall Guys Creative Rounds and with the ability to skip levels and move to another level, the second we're done will make this a really popular mode if the maps featured are consistently high quality. Because even though you can skip, if most of the levels aren't fun, then people won't even bother playing it in the first place. The whole core modes being 40 rounds and refreshing is what worries me the most, because the round pool is already repetitive and still as is. Decreasing the amount of rounds is going to expedite people's boredom with the game, and we don't even know how many unique rounds and how many creative rounds are going to be in the core modes. And also I hope they don't decrease the amount of LTMs we get, or change how frequently they appear. If anything, I like it if you could get two LTMs at the same time, rather than one, but that probably won't happen. However, if they refresh the maps regularly and bring back vaulted rounds on a consistent basis, along with putting high quality creator made rounds, this could be one of the best things they've done in a long time. Their player count being reduced to 32 and 3 rounds has people concerned, and what's funny is that both the player count and the round limit is the exact same as Tumble Guys. Guess if you can beat them, copy them. Those Tumble Guys did copy Fog Guys first, so I guess it's only fair they copy them, right? I, I, I don't know. With 32 players and 3 rounds, this basically means that Fog Guys Mobile will be near identical to Stumble Guys, which is low-key genius because if a Stumble Guys player migrates to Fall Guys, they'll feel right at home since the player count and route limit will be exactly the same. The physics changes will be hit or miss depending on how they implement it, but I could see people complaining about it for a while, though I'm really hyped for the ragdoll changes. Hopefully I can stop ragdolling a track attack because it's ruined a lot of my runs. The changes to creative mode are minimal, but the rotation controllers are going to make a lot of levels more interesting and I just cannot wait to see what people cook up with this one. Although the invisible checkpoints isn't something that's massive or cool or super impressive, it is definitely going to make a lot of levels more polished and it's definitely going to help create a rounds match up to the quality of Unity rounds, heck maybe even surpass them. And to me, the invisible checkpoints is one of the underrated things about this update. The social features are something I can see people having a lot of fun with and at the end of the day, Fall Guys should be fun and the social wheel does just that. Piggybacking is going to be a lot of fun, but I could see people not use it after a week or two or once the honeymoon phase is over. But I'm really glad it's going to be in all the shows and not just a creative only feature. And let's just say the 10.9 update breakdown will be interesting to say the least. Especially with refreshes, I have no idea how I'm going to cover all of that to be honest with you. And just like my other breakdowns, I'll be releasing it near the end of the update as I want to cover as much as I can. While I'm excited for the new update, the game has been out for almost 4 years now believe it or not, and it has a lot of historical moments, such as the time an artist drew one fall guy every day for an entire year. Click the video on screen to learn about that epic tale. And thank you to Maximum members for your support as always.